All right, we're here today to answer the age-old question, can reinforcement learning be used for solving classification problems? If all you're looking for here is an answer, the short answer is yes, it can. However, there's some important caveats, so stick through this video to find out why even though reinforcement learning works for solving classification problems, it's really not the best way to go. To answer the question definitively, I created an experiment. In this experiment, I'm training a classifier on the MNIST data, which is a series of handwritten digits, images in black and white, and I'm using two different reinforcement learning algorithms. On top of that, I'm comparing their results with a standard supervised learning approach. So I have my entire experiment here in this Jupyter Notebook and I'm going to walk you through how I set it up and what the results were. This Jupyter Notebook is available for download if you click the link in the description below. Okay so you can see here in our first cell we set up all of our imports. Not too much going on there. In our second cell, we actually load the MNIST data. We use the data function to actually download the entire data set and break it up into a training and test sets. This is really convenient and I actually just copied this entire portion from the Keras example for creating an MNIST convolutional neural network. You can see that we have 60,000 training samples and 10,000 test samples. Not a large data set by any means, but it seems to be sufficient for this simple problem. Next, we use Keras to train a classifier using a standard supervised learning approach. Some important points here, we're using a two-layer, multi-layer perceptron with 64 hidden units in each layer and ReLU activations. On top of that, we're using batch size 32, and we're going to train only for two epochs. So after running this, it'll tell us both the test accuracy and how long it took to train. So when we scroll down, we see the output. We had a 96% test accuracy and only 14 seconds to train. That's looking really good. This is going to be a high bar for the reinforcement learning algorithms to meet. So then we start getting our reinforcement learning interface set up. Ever since OpenAI released their gym library, it's become the de facto standard for creating reinforcement learning interfaces of any type. In this case, we set up a very simple environment where each action corresponds with selecting a class for a given image, and each observation is simply one image from the data set. We only process one image per episode, which means that each episode only has a single time step. This is because the temporal difference error inside of the reinforcement learning algorithms makes an assumption that an action at one time step affects rewards in future time steps. That doesn't make sense at all in a classification problem where all we want to know is whether or not the given image fits into what class. So for that reason, we only have one time step in each episode. We can swap our data set to X test and Y test and turn off random to turn this into an evaluation environment rather than a training environment. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Each step of the environment compares the selected class the agent chose with the correct class for that image, gets the next image in the data set, and returns the reward. Enough of this, let's get on to the reinforcement learning algorithms. So in this function right here, we use the OpenAI implementation of deep Q learning with dueling neural networks. We train for 120,000 time steps to simulate two epochs. Since there's 60,000 total training samples, 120,000 time steps simulates an average of visiting each training sample twice, even though that won't be exactly true. Other hyperparameters are fairly standard, so let's go ahead and take a look at how long this took to train. We can see here it took 461 seconds. That's a huge increase from our 14 seconds with the Keras supervised learning approach. But it looks like we did reach an average of 100% accuracy on the training set. Hopefully we didn't overfit. Let's go ahead and evaluate this now against the test set and see what the accuracy looks like. This function right here evaluates the DQN model we just trained against the test set and gives us the percentage of correct guesses. So we can see it got a 93.47% accuracy. That's really good. That answers the question. Reinforcement learning can definitely be used to solve classification problems. What exactly is the issue here? Why isn't it getting higher? Why is it taking so long? Well, that's because reinforcement learning thinks about a lot of other things that supervised learning doesn't have to think about. For example, the credit assignment problem. But really, everybody in RL knows DQN is old news. We need to train using something much better. On that note, so let's go ahead and train the classifier using PPO, which is pretty much one of the kings of the reinforcement learning algorithms. Once again, we use the OpenAI baselines implementation of PPO, and we train it against our MNIST ENV one more time, the same way we did in DQN. Once again, 120,000 time steps for two epochs, and let's see how long it took. 
Whoa, 638 seconds. That's even longer than DQN. This is not looking good at all. It did not even reach 100% accuracy on the training set. Let's see what it looks like against the test set. This function is pretty much the same as the DQN evaluation function. Not going to go over that. And we can see 95% accuracy. Now that is actually pretty good. We're almost at the accuracy level of our Kara supervised learning implementation. However, it took 600 seconds. And if we let the Kara supervised learning go for that long, it would get way higher than 96%, most likely. So what can we conclude from this? Knowing that all the models use roughly the same number of parameters, there's some slight variations due to differences in the architectures for dueling DQN and the PPO value head. We know all of our models were run for the equivalent of two epics, so there were no disadvantages there. And yet none of the reinforcement learning approaches reached the same accuracy as our Keras implementation and took 30 to 40 times as long. So let's answer the question, can reinforcement learning be used to solve classification problems? Yes, it definitely can. And if you don't believe it and you want to test it for yourself, click the link in the description below and you can run this Jupyter Notebook for yourself and see it with your own eyes. Reinforcement learning takes way too long to solve classification problems and is clearly suboptimal. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this content, remember to like and subscribe. I'm covering many different AI topics with a focus on reinforcement learning. Thank you and have a great day.